What's up y'all? It's your girl Sang. Today I'm walking around this beautiful neighborhood, as you can see. And uh basically on today's walk, I started listening to an audiobook called Your First Five Moves. It's by uh Patrick Bet David. He's the guy that runs the Value Taming YouTube channel, in case you guys don't know. I highly recommend checking that channel out. It's really good, a lot of valuable business information is on there. Um, but I never read the book. I actually got the book from a book list from a guy named Luke Belmar, who is a multi-millionaire. He ended up actually making his fortune in crypto. So it's one of the books he's read. Uh, considering I follow the YouTube channel, I don't know why I've never like read that book myself, but I figured today, might as well start listening to it. So I'm in the beginning stages of the book. And basically he explains how when it comes to business and life, you always need to be thinking a couple steps ahead and he compared it to chess so if you've ever played chess coming up um, the grandmaster can usually see 12 steps ahead and he explained that a lot of successful business people actually do play chess and it helps them within uh, their business life because it helps them figure out how many steps ahead they need to be um, when it comes to running their business so Something that stood out to me so far in the beginning of the book, outside of him saying that, is that he said, um, a lot of us, usually when we make our moves, it's usually off of a reaction to somebody else's move. So he gave a good example of that where he explained he used to work in a Valley Total Fitness when he was like way younger. And his boss promised him a position as a weekend manager at a, at a Hollywood location. And they were like, if you can go to this place and turn it around, I'll give you the position here. Um, we all know how corporate America is. So despite him doing what he needed to do, he like killed sales goals. He was at the top of the charts and everything. Um, they didn't give the position to him. They gave it to another guy that was up for it, but didn't even hit his sales goals. It was just because he was there longer, you know? And he, obviously got mad which i don't blame him for being mad but he went outside to think about all the next moves if he stayed with this company and he was only really able to think one or two moves ahead now because they had already made their move which was hiring the other guy and so his next move was to quit and when he said that most people make their reactions off of that they do. Like, how many times have you worked with people where they've gotten mad because a boss promised them something and it angered them so they left immediately right on the spot, right? I'm pretty sure you've done it. I've done it before. It happens, you know. Um, you're not thinking as far ahead as you should be. And I actually thought way further ahead when I left my last job. Like, I, everything was planned out. It was like, we're going to save this much money by this date I'm gonna leave and then I'm gonna get everything uh, properly going in terms of uh, being off so I can get the licenses paperwork blah 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 so there was an actual plan instead of what I would have usually done which is if uh, you know a boss pissed me off or a, a co-worker pissed me off I'd be out of there you know with, with no no backup plan at all right so uh -oh. gotta make sure you know cars come in so I could agree with that and then I'm I'm actually looking into I said this earlier on the gaming stream but I'm, I'm taking a women's entrepreneurship course at Cornell uh, starts at the end of this month and it runs for like three months and it teaches you how to um, basically set up your business make connections stuff like that stuff that you need to be an entrepreneur and basically um going to be there i also want to read this book because i want to be five moves ahead for the first time in my life with doing something so like even with quitting my last job it's like yeah i planned about two or three steps ahead but i didn't plan that far out ahead and it's just something a lot of us do it's natural one of the things he said is that um you know, when you're coming up as a kid, they'd be like, oh, what's your dream job? 
and everybody's like, oh, I want to, um, let's just say, let's just say you like playing sports and you're just like, I want to be an NFL player. Nothing wrong with that, you know, and then life happens and that doesn't pan out the way it pans out. And now you're not an NFL player. Now you just have a regular job. Um, your confidence level for a lot of things start getting lower when it comes to um, making decisions to go down certain paths. And that's pretty much what he was talking about. And I just thought it was very interesting. Even with the, um, the whole chess tip that he was talking about where he's saying a lot of successful people play chess and came up playing chess. When I was younger, I didn't play chess until like um, fifth grade. So fifth grade is when they threw me in honors classes. Uh, if you don't know what honors classes is, that's where like, that's where the smart kids in the school go. Um, just cause you have good memorization skills. So being in those classes, that's the first time I had ever seen or heard of chess. Prior to that, never heard of it. And they, every day it was like mandatory for us to play chess in class. Like I think they would take an hour out or something like that. And I remember a lot of the kids, because I guess they had been in honors, they whole school career, I guess, and um, played at home. It was just kind of like, oh, you ain't never played chess. Ah. And it was like making fun of me and I made it my goal. So like once a week we would go to the school library. So once that happened, when we go to the library, I would check out a whole bunch of chess books, like how to play, techniques, strategies. And I asked my parents if they can buy me a chess board. So at first they got me a regular one. And after school, I would come home, I'd watch Pokemon, <laughs> do my homework, eat. And then I would just read those books and play chess by myself on a board. And I would, you know, map out all the moves and stuff and I would play the different techniques and it'd be like and I, I would start envisioning things two steps ahead and then three steps ahead and four steps ahead right until one day they had a chess tournament in my class and this one girl was just bragging she was just like oh I I won the last tournament it was like a city tournament or something I don't know where it was at and then she brought her trophy in and I'm just like all right whatever Everybody thought I was gonna be out first round because you know you have brackets. I win and I win again. And one kid in my class is like, wow, you're really good. So he started hanging with me and uh, coaching me while I'm going through this tournament. So I get to the end, I get to the finals and it's against the girl that, you know, was bragging. She brought her trophy in and whatnot. Turns out, I ended up beating her. When you want to talk about the saltiest face in the world, like she was, she was so salty. Like she was upset, complaining. And kid who coached me, he ended up actually being really cool. I ended up being like really good friends with him um, up until, but well, we got to middle school and I was still in honors, and, but we just weren't in the same uh, classes because they, they broke. They end up breaking people up into teams. It's stupid. It was really stupid how they split everybody up. But um, yeah, so I used to play chess a lot going up, growing up. Now, once I became an adult, I stopped playing as much because I didn't have anybody to play with, you know? Yeah, I'm an honor, so I have other kids to play with because I see them every day. Then you just grow up and like, nobody in my circle really played like that. Like, they know how to play but we weren't just sitting around playing chess all day. We were actually playing basketball every day. <laughs> That's what we ended up doing until at a point in time you just get older. And then it just got down to where it was like me, my boyfriend and one of our other friends it was like, we were playing basketball every day. They just like tri 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 shriveled down to just like us three. Cause like everybody had jobs and then like we worked for ourselves. So <laughs> it's just what it ended up being, but after hearing that, I do have a plan where like I do want to start playing chess more again. And it's the age of the internet, so I don't know why I didn't just do this from jump to continue playing. But I'm just gonna buy it like on Steam 
because I'm pretty sure they should have chess games on there. I'm just gonna buy a chess game and just play people around the world. It's probably gonna make me better anyways, because, you know, different skill levels and whatnot, because everybody's way more advanced than the people like in your city, in your circle, theoretically speaking. Like you're gonna, you're gonna go and get somebody that's better than the top dog where you live. So that's probably gonna only make me better. And theoretically, it should help me get back into that zone where I'm starting to see things two, three, four, five steps ahead. So when I get ready to finish my program out and I'm ready to launch my business and start that in business terms, I will now actually start be like thinking two, three, four, five moves ahead. So hopefully that betters me and helps me out. And that's just something I wanted to share real quick while I'm on my walk. I'm actually getting back to this audio book. So until next time, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Cause you already know who it is. Same bitch.